Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. So today what I'm going to be showing you is how you can schedule tasks in Node.js to occur at a specific point in time and also how you can repeat a task at a given time interval. So for this I'm going to be using a library available via npm. It's called Node Schedule. So I'm going to be copying the installation command and then in my terminal I've already cd'd into my project folder so I'm going to paste the installation command there. So now that I've installed this library, I can go ahead and start using it in my app.js file. So first of all, I need to import this library into my project. So I'll save it under a reference of schedule. You could call it something else and it would work just as well. I'm just sticking to the reference that they use in the documentation for this package and inside require all I need to do to import it is to name the package and now I have available to me all of the functions of this library on this schedule object that will allow me to schedule my tasks. So I'll save this now and set a task to occur at a certain point in time. So this library works with the native JavaScript date object. So first thing to do is to create one of those containing the date and time when you want the task to occur. So to create a new date object, you create a new instance of date. And I'm going to create a date here by passing in numeric arguments. So today is the 9th of December. You need to watch out with the months. So with a date object, the counting of months, it starts from zero. So December would be 11. That's not the case for days, however. So for the 9th of December, I can just enter nine there and I'll enter the time as 1500 hours and I'll come back and edit this in a moment. So this task occurs just after I've written the next bit of code. So we're now going to call on the library to schedule the task. So it's under the reference schedule and you want to call the schedule job method. The first argument you pass in here is the date object that you've created and the second argument is a function in which you place the task whatever it is you want to do. So in practice you might be using this to schedule the running of a web scraper or to fetch data from an API but in this tutorial I'm just going to log a message to the console when it's complete. So I'm just going to say that the task is complete and also include a log of the time when that occurred. So I can do that by just calling the date constructor and not passing anything into it. Okay, so the time now is two minutes past three, coming up to three minutes past three. So I'll just quickly set the scheduled time of this task to occur at three minutes past three. I'll run my app and now when it hits three o'clock, we should see the message log to the console with the current time. So there you go, the task ran as expected. Okay, so now what I'm going to show you is how you can set a task to repeat at a specified time interval. So this time, instead of passing in a date object, we're going to be passing in something called a cron expression. Now, if you're not familiar with what one of those is, don't worry, I'll be showing you how you can create your own in a moment. But first, I'll call schedule job again. So very similar to last time, except the first argument is a cron expression. The task itself is passed inside a function in the second position. So you can get an overview of how a cron expression is formatted if you visit the node schedule npm page and then scroll down. So this is a good overview of how you do it. I'll just comment it out. So each start represents a unit of time starting from seconds to minutes to hours to days to months and then finally days of the week. Now, in terms of creating your own cron expression, if you're unfamiliar with them, you can visit this. It's a cron expression generator. So in case you're not familiar with cron expressions, I'd recommend playing around with this tool 
for a few minutes, there's a key here showing you the values that you can enter for each of the units and also some example cron expressions here to get started with. Now there's only five units listed here. The seconds in a cron expression are usually optional, but in this tutorial, we're actually going to be setting the task to run in seconds so that you can see the task repeating in real time. So I'm going to copy this expression to use it in my code. So I enter it as the first argument here and I need to set the task to run every three seconds. So I'll just say job done here. And in fact, I could use console count here to see how many times this has run. Okay, so hopefully this is working now. I can start my app and the task should be running every three seconds. So you can see this is repeating itself and it's just going to repeat indefinitely here unless I cancel it. So that's the final thing I want to show you in this tutorial. So to cancel a job, you need a reference to the job that you want to cancel and you can get that as a return value when you first create a job. So I'll save this under a reference of job and then all you need to do is call the cancel method on the job. So now when I run my app, this job done, it's only going to run once. So I'll start a new instance of PowerShell, run node app, so now job done, it only runs once and then my node app, it shuts down. Now, if you want the job to complete a certain number of times, let's say for example, three times, what you can do is create a variable that starts with a value of zero and then a variable that specifies the number of times that the task should be completed. And then each time the job is done, increase the value of i by one, and then check if i is equal to n, then you want to cancel the job at that point. So I'll run the app once more. This time the job should only complete on three occasions. So you see, as soon as the third one has completed, my node app stops running because there are no more tasks to be completed. So this is how you can schedule tasks in Node.js. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button down below this video. It helps us with the algorithm and others to find this video. And if you'd like to see more content like this from us in the future, don't forget you can subscribe to the channel.